Rolflin, who was in the loft upstairs at that stage with the Shakespearean company, he would come down and he would buy sweets for both his parishioners as well as his people in the Shakespearean company. He would come in and he'd stand, or maybe 15, 20 minutes, at the fire. He would have a chat, go back out, go back upstairs, and you could hear him practicing Shakespeare, which the man had a fantastic voice. And then just across the road, we had a Butherestian band, and they would be rehearsing as well. Um, and it was, it, it created a lovely scene, a lovely atmosphere, Christmassy atmosphere, well before Christmas. We're here since 1920, late 20s. Not sure exactly, but my father and grandfather worked here. It's Tony is the fourth generation. We had aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters. Everybody always chipped in. We make, oh, maybe nine, ten different types of sweets. We do clove rock, bullseyes, mixtures, butterscotch, acid drops, cough drops. And leading up to Christmas then, we would, in the middle of November, we make a festive mix for Christmas alone. And uh, we know then Christmas is coming on when people order festive mix. So we would work up to Christmas week, Christmas Eve, making sweets, because we make sweets 50, 50, 51 weeks of the year. And after Christmas, we take a week off. The pot is boiling for 51 weeks. We were born and reared into sweet baking. It's more than just a job. It's a way of life, it's part of what you do and what you are. And I could never vision either me or Tony or any of my family.